listeners welcome to another great podcast session i'm shivani muthiala the most common technological trend in the market that is booming like never before is artificial intelligence definitely it has been taking over most of the industries irrespective of the sectors ai is adding great value from automating the process on one side and also improving the better customer experiences on the other side just think of ai when combined with design thinking It's amazing right it's going to yield a lot of innovative products and solutions isn't it well to talk in the same context we have Vivek Puri who is a global practice lead for customer experience solutions at Brilliant so let's welcome our speaker for the day hi vivek how are you doing yeah i'm doing well shivani thank you pleasure thank to have you here on analytics insight platform so first of all could you tell our listeners what relio is all about Yeah, Billio was formed seven years back uh, with the promise of digital, right? And uh, 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 like, if you look at, you know, like how we've been helping various clients accelerate their digital transformation now, right? So that's the focus of Billio, and this was leveraged on, you know, key digital technologies like IoT, data, AI, uh, cloud, and mobile. you know leveraging you know like um, like leveraging these technologies with a very strong product you know product engineering like and data analytics mindset coupled with design thinking was the key to kind of helping um, various organizations accelerate their digital transformation as that was the need of the hour now you know like 5 years or 7 years hence you know billio has really taken you know very big strides in this direction we already are recognized by some of the leading analysts including you know forester who recognizes us for our um, like leading um, agile product you know management as well as digital experience transformation capabilities and we've been helping several fortune 1000 clients in this space uh, you know trying to lead them through their digital transformation by leveraging a very innovative blend of digital technologies um, like and also modernizing some of their legacy applications using these technologies um a very key aspect of you know billio is our service offerings um, you know which are very much you know tuned to our promise you know which is to accelerate what matters the most now and uh, you're starting with that you know we've got very strong you know practices in the various areas that bring together these technologies you know in a very very orchestrated and seamless fashion starting from product and platform engineering which are focused on developing some of the latest cloud native you know like platforms you know which are really key to kind of you know helping our clients to really build products which are you know which are in the digital age and and basically enable digital first businesses um a couple with that we have a very strong um, you know customer experience solutions you know practice which is what i lead and this is all about you know helping our clients to really transform their front offices like as well as you know like develop engaging customer you know experiences end to end you know using latest platforms of crm um you know um marketing technologies as well as commerce and we also have a very strong data and analytics and you know engineering capabilities which are really uh you know at the heart of it which is uh, like helping our clients um in various areas of putting data together putting customer at the center and really you know like making data as the key powerhouse for transformation we also have a very strong digital infrastructure capabilities which is all focused about how can clients you know move over to the new new age uh, the cloud based digital platforms as well as you know like the infrastructure required to run it and all along a very central theme of you know all we do is our billio studio which is the core of you know design thinking where you know everything that we build everything that we do you know is like is really informed by um by a very strong design thinking and a design um uh, mindset and this is where our brilio studio which has a very strong uh you know capabilities around customer journey analysis customer experience assessment as well as user experience design really comes in to play um like you know like in a very seamless manner orchestrating like across all of these capabilities to help build the next generation of digital experiences for our clients amazing thanks for you know letting our listeners know what uh, brilio specializations and services are and uh, of which you uh, mentioned in this uh, services and specializations list so which one is your favorite or something which is close to your heart so what's really close to my heart is how we can help you know clients um transform their customer experiences 
which is the uh, like which is the experience they really offer to their end customers right and as you know um uh, you know like you know we are all through the pan- like we're all going through the pandemic you know which has really um, brought in you know some very significant shifts in terms of you know what customers expect and and how do they behave right there's a very strong shift towards digital first which means to interact and to really consume brands you know very seamless manner you know using digital at the core and also there is a very um, strong need for organizations to accelerate um, you know their like their products and services to be able to connect with customers you know given their new um, their like the significant shift or new demands right so um, as you look at the entire customer experience you know at the highest level uh, organizations will need to develop experiences that are authentic inclusive and responsive and when i say authentic it's all about how does the brand authentically you know interacts with their customers engages with their like with their end customers and being inclusive is uh, like to not just basically you know uh, like we've been talking about different trends uh, in the past like personalizations or or you're trying to you know like have campaigns and others directed at customers but now is the world where where customers really want conversations right so it's all about how you can really make your you know make your brand to really converse with clients right and have those conversations which are more one to one than than rule based or you know like or otherwise right and then it's all about responsive like being responsive as an organization which is to really leverage data at the core to understand your customers to understand their like their needs preferences behaviors in real time you know which is a big big aspect and that's where we see a lot of organizations trying to move the needle up and how do you really you know leverage data to like become a responsive organization that is listening to their customers and then accordingly you know adjusting or you know like further evolving the experiences that are um, that really help the customers to connect with the brand better and to get a greater customer life cycle value so you know that's one area where i feel you know if you look at this area it involves a combination of of strategy which is to really figure out the right customer experience you know strategies um, which also involve a fair amount of experimentation and that is again where data plays a pretty big role in terms of how do you really uh, you know set up experiments in a very ongoing basis to, to really understand what works and what doesn't work with the customer and then to really organize your organize like like to organize the company around you know the customer really which is a big you know which is a big shift in terms of breaking down organizational functional silos and really orienting the organization towards um, the customer being customer centric and 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 being customer you know like to a point where you're really fanatical about um, like serving the customer and this also uh, at the very core of it is to really build um, you know new age digital products through very strong engineering product engineering and you know bringing in um, um that level of expertise you know as it relates to building scalable you know like platforms which can really which really you know wow the customer from you know from their um, their perspective and then really having a very robust set of data instrumentation which really helps us you know capture you know the customers capture the moments analyze those and that's where ai and you know, like ml and and analytics play such a key role to really understand those in real time and to also you know like action them in real time which has been a key uh, you know like which has been a key differentiator and a key area of focus for a lot of organizations where you you know based on meaningful data you know can really you know through through apis or through other you know ways actually can drive events and can capture those moments which can really yield a very significant business outcome which is different to but to when you do it through a very um, unresponsive or a very siloed way of working right so i think that's one area which um, shivani really interests me a lot and obviously that's something which is very close to my heart is how do we really design and really you know implement and then evolve some of these you know great customer experiences leveraging new age technologies particularly data in ai and ml amazing and as a global practice lead for customer experience solutions like what are your uh, roles and responsibilities in the company yeah, so i lead the global uh, practice for customer experience solution and i would break it up into uh, you know two main focus areas you know the first one is really um, as we call it as you know lead to revenue which is to really help organizations transform their front end 
uh, you know, sales organizations and sales processes to really, you know, come up with new innovative ideas in a very seamless manner for their customers. And this involves a lot of uh, um, like areas along, you know, alongside, like as you conceptualize new products and as you bring them to the to the market. The other big area is um, focusing on, you know, marketing experience and commerce solutions, which is with data at the center, right? So if you look at, you know, our approach and how we really want to, you know, want to look at it, you know, bring like building on the earlier, um, the earlier thought of, you know, building out, you know, authentic, inclusive and responsive, uh, you know, experiences. The key here is to really put data at the center, right? And, and when I say data at the center, you know, meaning uh, like it means the understanding of the customer at the center. So it's like all about the customer 360, uh, you know, the first party data and also, you know, second and third party data is appropriate and really build a very strong, you know, like understanding of the customer. And then there are four big, you know, four big areas of focus that we would, you know, do, like, uh, like we would do in a um, customer experience transformation space. And we work across this for a number of our clients. The first one is how do we really leverage that data to create hyper personalized, you know, experiences for our customers across different channels. One of the biggest um, biggest areas in our experience is that a lot of the cust- like a lot of our clients, you know, like a lot of clients in general are actually looking into like sometimes um, try and optimize experience across touch points, right? Which means that you know they would focus on like on touch points like mobile, web, or otherwise. Whereas the key to strong, you know, customer experiences, especially around personalization, are all about, you know, optimizing and really, you know, uh, like re-architecting journeys as opposed to touch points, right? So we have to start thinking about like end-to-end customer journeys. And design thinking plays a very big role in this, right? Trying to figure out what would be those, like those end-to-end customer journeys, which would really provide that strong, you know, um, strong experiences to the customers. And that's what you know. Hyper personalization is all about is you're leveraging the understanding of the customer. Uh, like to really try and make um, personalization or not like not as rule based, but as interaction based or conversation based, which is in real time. You know, trying to offer the customers the right content and the right product and the right recommendations. You know, to kind of you know take forward. The other big area you know focus the 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 second area here is all about you know, revenue acceleration, where you really help our clients, you know, based on the understanding of the customer through, you know, commerce platforms and end-to-end, you know, e-commerce models, you know, whether it's uh, D2C or it is B2B or it is B2C or it is marketplace or otherwise, to really help them, you know, develop those channels, which can, you know, which can really help uh, to kind of become a digital first organization where a lot of the the commerce elements come into play through different platforms, you know, like be it custom or otherwise. The third big area of focus, uh, you know, in this is all about how do we really help our clients to come up with newer business models, right? So as an example, we are working with uh, like many of our clients to kind of think about new subscription-based models, you know, which is offering their services in a very different manner for you know, for customers to consume, you know, through subscriptions, which are end-to-end enabled and right from the front end to when a customer can really subscribe to those different services, change their subscriptions, change the consumption. And then based on those consumptions all the way to how the customer gets billed and then, you know, get service for those, like for those services. So it enables many of the organizations to kind of come up with new, uh, new, uh, you know, business models. One more example of this is the whole API you know, economy, which is how you really leverage, you know, um, build across, you know, like API led businesses, which can be like through different shapes of like partnerships or through different, you know, uh, you know, partner network to kind of come up with newer offerings. Right. And the fourth and the most important area, like I would say, is once you've acquired the customers to really provide them world class services and world class customer care and, you know, uh, like in real time you know, service which really helps uh, to kind of drive loyalty and greater brand connection and hence, you know, customer lifecycle value. And data obviously plays, you know, like a key role in all of these four, you know, four dimensions where, you know, uh, but like, for example, you know, if you look at the fourth area I was talking about, uh, like in terms of, you know, customer lifecycle value, uh, you know, once you have a strong understanding of the customers, it's very important for us to, uh, like as many clients, what we're doing is, you know, we are really leveraging you know, AI to kind of develop, you know, various models around customer propensity, which means, 
you know, customer propensity to buy certain services towards certain channels, towards certain, you know, products, uh, like as well. Or for example, you know, uh, like churn prediction models where you can really, you know, predict churn for a customer at a, like a given point in time and then devise and activate strategies accordingly. Or a better uh, like segmentation and targeting for the customers where you can really look at, um, you know, uh, like all the way starting from identity um, resolution, which is how do you really help to identify a customer and then to kind of create, you know, one-to-one, like a one-to-one, you know, segmentation, which is really very crucial as opposed to kind of rule-based, you know, segmentation, which happen in, you know, traditional CRMs. And this is all about, you know, leveraging customer data platforms, you know, like architecting them around building a very strong uh, uh, understanding of the customer in terms of various attributes and, and, and various buying preferences and, and, you know, past records and stuff. And based on that, you know, you're able to really, you know, come up with much more meaningful offers for the customers, right? Whether it's, uh, you know, campaigns, whether it's offers, and that also translates into, you know, much higher, you know, metrics like CTRs and others. So again, you know, like a very strong use of how, you know, all the way you would interconnect data, right? And make it so fundamental across all of these four, you know, pillars I talked about to kind of drive very strong customer experiences, you know, through various channels and also with the design thinking of, you know, like of customer journeys as opposed to touch point, where the experience across channels for a customer is very seamless. And that is what drives, you know, success for like both for the organizations as well as for the customers. That sounded really interesting. And uh, as technology these days has been very prominent for most of the operations, like how the company is leveraging uh, tech trends, you know, such as uh, whether it be artificial intelligence or big data analytics, as you just spoke. So how are you leveraging these new age technologies for delivering superior customer experience? Yeah, we have many examples of, you know, of leveraging um these technologies right and the four big uh like technologies which are pretty common nowadays and are very key to digital transformation are you know iot cloud um data and mobile and obviously there are a number of other um you know emerging technologies or you know, disruptive uh, like, like, like technologies which are also you know coming into play like serverless or or others right um now, I think, uh, like, you know, based on the different use cases, so I can probably walk through a few different use cases where, you know, where, uh, like where usage of these technologies comes to the, like, comes to the fore, right? So um, I'll take an example of a, uh, like, of a client who we are currently working with, and and they are a large, um, you know, company which are, like, which are, um, like, who are providing both B2B and B2C services, right? And that these are services for, you know, pest control and, and some of the other you know services that they provide, and um, you know one of the key challenges for this organization you know has been to really craft their end-to-end customer experience, which like they would believe will resonate uh, you know with their end customers, as well as also you know increase the adoption of digital across their B two B and B two C clients. So we started off a journey with them uh, you know a few months back, and we were looking at you know first of all you know evaluating their entire you know end-to-end customer experience. Uh, where the focus is a lot to drive, you know, engagement through the online channels, and to really, you know, drive all the way to like to con- uh, like to the conversion of customers, right? And one of the key things there was to really leverage, you know, cloud-based platforms, uh, you know, where you're leveraging, you know, cloud, as well as to really look at the right level of data instrumentation, you know, which can really help us to really uh, like try and quantify the various, you know, key performance indicators across the whole value chain. So we looked at um, you know, setting up a complete data infrastructure for them, um, designing the right instrumentation, which really helps us capture like the right analytics at different points in time across the whole funnel, sales funnel. And then based on that sales funnel, we actually, you know, set up uh, like and ran various experiments to figure out what kind of experience would really resonate with customers, right? Which was heavily data-driven and not only heuristics based, uh, right? And then we are now, you know, helping them to kind of, you know, uh, like like based on that, we came up with um, with new customer journey maps, which was really trying to figure out in terms of, you know, how those end-to-end journeys would look like in the future, and also uh, like like in the like in the next set of iterations, you know, as they look at expanding their services to commerce and other, uh, you know, channels. 
And based on those customer journeys, you know, then we created the complete you know, designs of that. And then now we are implementing that, you know, like, like on their commerce platform and helping them, you know, do that, right? One more example is like in site here is for a, you know, for a large, like for a leading cold storage services firm. And when we engaged with them a few years back, they were only a, like a few hundred million. And, and today they are, they're amongst the largest, perhaps if not the largest, they're amongst the largest, you know, core services storage companies in the world. And um, that transformation really entailed, uh, you know, all aspects, like all the four technologies that I just, you know, that, that I just, you know, mentioned a few minutes back, right? So starting from, you know, how they can really leverage and build on, like, uh, like modernize their warehouse management systems on new cloud solutions, using cloud as the, um, like as the key infrastructure, uh, you know, to kind of as the key vehicle to provide, you know, services in a very seamless manner. So we kind of, you know, help to kind of integrate all of their warehouse management systems, modernize them on the latest cloud. And also really, you know, like as they expand their organization, both organically and uh, 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 like and inorganically, really helping those uh, those modernizations to scale up, right? The other part was to try and leverage, you know, technologies like IoT to kind of develop concepts around smart warehousing, smart supply chain. Um, and that was very heavily you know, involved in terms of, you know, developing, you know, concepts which we could take and we could debate, uh, you know, and figure out, you know, how they could be leveraged. And then building a complete supply chain data lake, which was um, like, which is a huge data lake, you know, which really like gets all of the right meaningful data together. And then through different events and uh, like a different APIs to really develop a, the right level of KPI in measures and analytics to like for action, like for action planning, as well as in real time, you know, serve, like serving those actions to their, like their respective platforms to like to enable those those operational decision making, which can really help you know drive business value, right? So if you look at this example, you know you've kind of covered everything from, uh, you know, from cloud to um, to kind of IoT to um, to kind of data, AI, and ML, and then for a number of other clients, you know, like talking about you know mobile experiences, right? So as you look at um, most of the organizations today, in fact, it's become an imperative, and with the pandemic. Uh, the mobile has really, really, uh, you know, uh, I would say, you know, really grown in terms of adoption, you know, both like, like, especially in terms of mobile apps, be it native or be it, you know, otherwise in terms of hybrid mo like mobile apps. So again, for a lot of our clients, you know, uh, like, you know, mobile is not just another channel, it's become, you know, the primary channel and, and what you call as mobile first experiences. So for a number of the clients, uh, you know, the ones I talked to and uh, like, and even otherwise, you know, we have, like we're looking at like and we have developed you know very strong mobile experiences um which are really enabling you know clients uh, like their end customers to kind of use mobile as a as a seamless channel you know for for interaction and and we have a number of such examples where we developed you know front uh, like really you know leading edge or cutting edge you know mobile applications for our clients uh, across different industry sectors right so that's again one of the other use cases of how we like we are leveraging these technologies towards um, like towards accelerating the digital transformation of organizations. Happy to know how the company is enhancing the new trends, whether it be IoT or AI or cloud or many more, in delivering superior customer experiences. That great to know. And as customer behavior has been changing every new day, so how do you think we can handle this particular situation? Yes, yeah, so that's a very um, uh, um, that's a very good question, uh, uh, Shivani. I think see one of the key here is uh, like as an organization, you know, there is a there is a certain cultural shift, and also obviously, you know, like like technology is one of the key drivers. But I think there's a certain cultural shift to become a responsive organization, and a responsive organization truly is one which uh, which is continuously you know listening to the customers, right? Because because many of these trends or these these shift in behaviors or the shift in trends are all very dynamic in nature, right? And you know, uh, like and very successful organizations who are you know who are doing this or like or who want to do it, uh, the one fundamental is uh, like in my view is to really become a responsive organization, which is having the ability, like first of all the the uh, uh, like the ecosystem and the technology backbone and the uh, like and the uh, like and the know-hows of really, you know, understanding customer behaviors, right? And this is a continuous process. It's like it's not just uh, 
that we just put one you know one solution in place and that kind of lasts us for like forever right it's a very agile process and the second thing i would say is agility you know which is uh, which is super critical so for example when you devise products like and you roll those products out to customers and you start measuring you know the customers feedback on those products in real time right um that's where you know billio's capabilities around product engineering are kind of you know fairly fairly deep and fairly compelling because you know like it's not about just you know developing a digital product and then putting it out to the end customer it's all about you know like after that it is all about you know measuring and continuously improving the product so that based on those measurements based on the feedback you know based on like those metrics you know you can really uh, like analyze those and then feed them back as the backlog for the product to innovate and we've been doing this for a lot of our clients you know using uh, you know like using also the billio 1.ai framework like which is a like a set of you know accelerators which really you know is built around you know how do you really apply you know ai and analytics and all forms of product engineering to really you know understand some of these shifts in customer behaviors and then to start you know like like filtering them back into meaningful backlog items for the products to really get evolved right this is a continuous journey and that's where i think you know you know billio has really excelled um, through our product engineering and analytics you know the frameworks which we really you know work with a number of clients trying to uh, uh, like not just develop like but even evolve products you know to the changing needs of the customer perfect so and we spoke about the customer experiences in the in our before you know conversation so what advantages and disadvantages of customer experience with regard to the consumer you know behavior exist do you think sorry can you please specify uh, or just kind of uh, just elaborate in terms of in what in what context are you looking at for you know for advantages and disadvantages i'm just did you point one yes so uh, i was uh, asking you that what are the advantages and disadvantages of you know customer experiences that actually are uh, persistent in the market nowadays so what yeah. would be the uh, good sides and what would be the bad sides of it yeah. Yes, I wouldn't say there are any bad sides. I would just say there are challenges which which organization need to like to embrace because I can only see good sides of it, right? And why I say that is because um, you know um, the the fundamental uh, like the fundamental shift we are seeing in customer behaviors and the customer you know demands and expectations is that they're really asking you know like like the ask of different brands is to really. help them connect much better and 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 get served with the most innovative products and services you know that we are looking at and i think uh, like that's something which you know which really has a lot of advantages in terms of uh, uh, like the quality of like uh, the quality of services and products which the customers are looking at or are, like or like or are being provided like like uh, like it's a continuous you know shift up really you know from from that perspective there is a very strong you know advantage in terms of it really drives the need to innovate right so for a lot of the organizations it's driving the the need to kind of you know continuously innovate to really uh, you know make sure that they understand and then they they are responding to the 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 changing needs and behaviors of the customers and it's also like the other advantage i would say is it's also helping organization to become much more leaner uh, you know nimble faster and more agile you know taking costs out of the system and Uh, like really finding ways in which they could uh, like like they could service and and wow their customers at the optimal price point right now some of the challenges on the other hand for organizations um, that are there is that you know if you look at many organizations so for example you know a lot of our clients like where we are helping them to kind of also modernize their uh, their legacy platforms to be like to like to provide that next generation of digital ecosystem you know one of the biggest challenges for the organizations is the pace at which this is changing right so the pace of it is uh, like like really fast which is really in, like like which is really putting a lot of pressure on organizations to really you know accelerate their uh, their digital transformation journeys and there are two types of organizations one are more digitally native which means they've been set up with no real legacy of you know of old systems and processes the others are the organizations which actually have been working in a very different model you know and now feel the need to change uh, you know at a very very brisk pace or a very fast pace and which also involves you know trying to do like to manage that change within the organization be it systems processes or people or talent right and that's where i see a lot of the challenges you know coming in the play where 
where organizations are kind of grappling with that. Uh, you know, to kind of run at a breakneck speed to kind of meet to the customer's, uh, you know, expectation. And, and frankly, that's where, you know, the likes of Brilio, you know, like are really stepping up and really, you know, being very situationally fluent to make sure that in the context of the client, we're like, we're charting out the, like the most accelerated and optimal, you know, uh, like transformation journeys to enable them, like, like to enable those organizations to really service to the next generation customer needs and and wants right. Um, the other aspect I would say is that the pace of it, you know, is also putting a lot of pressure on talent. And right now, you know, as you all know, um, you know, there there's a lot of research available. Uh, you know, from a talent perspective, it's a you know when it comes to real digital transformation skills or the modern skills, um, like both in product as well as engineering strategy, like like you know like like as well as industry vertical knowledge, there is a huge pressure for talent, and and there is a and, and like there are kind of like uh, like for example there are research articles which kind of talk about the growth of you know digital talent in India from a demand perspective needs to be nine x by you know uh, like like compared to what it is today you know by twenty twenty five right and that puts a huge amount of you know um, like like challenge but at the same time it's also a great opportunity for you know for organizations and the industry to kind of really leverage and grow talent you know uh, which is uh, you know, which is kind of uh, like the new age talent that can help to kind of accelerate these digital journeys. So I would say it's both a challenge as well as an opportunity. But these are some of the pressures I feel, uh, you know, with the like with the changing you know customer paradigm that really places on organizations. Very rightly said, and I'm sure many of uh, many of the you know companies must be facing similar challenges and also enjoying most of its advantages too. So, uh, in the same context, how do you think uh, you know AI and design thinking can benefit in upgrading better customer experience? Yeah, that's a great question, uh, like Shivani. I think uh, like both design thinking and AI, I think, go very much hand in hand, right? And they are. I would say they are the core of providing strong, you know, fundamentally strong customer experiences. Uh, so, in starting with design thinking, I think design thinking is all about, you know, there are different sh- there, like there are different acronyms to it, but it's all about coming up with human centric experiences, uh, you know, which are omnichannel in nature, which are end to end in nature, which really like help to come up with, uh, like I would say, it's like it's in two parts. One is the design the right thing, and then design it right, right. So when you say design the right thing, it's all about, you know, like what kind of customer journeys are you looking to really craft or design, which we believe will be human centric, which we believe will be, you know, providing a superlative experience to customers um, are based on the modern design practices and which would really help, you know, like customers to uh, uh, like to kind of connect very strongly with the brand and, and experience it in the same way. Um, I think that's where design thinking really comes into play. But design is not a one-time process. It's a continuous process. And that's where I would say, you know, when you are designing it, you know, it's important to kind of break it up into smaller chunks, um, as you would say, you know, based on value streams. And then, you know, for the various value streams, I like to kind of design with certain level of experimentation, which is important because, uh, you know, it's very important to kind of like in real time, you know, be able to like figure out how the design concepts are landing with customers, which means uh, like to kind of you know design experiments in terms of what works, what doesn't work, collate data, go back and refine experiences in a very very continuous manner, right? So, in design thinking is absolutely you know critical to kind of figure out those right customer journeys, you know, which are really uh, uh, like which are really going to be providing those superlative experiences, and then not just to deliver it one time, but to kind of you know make it as a part of of delivery and you know really make it as a fundamental part of the proposition which is done from a like very much on an ongoing basis right now um, um coming to ai right which is uh, you know which is um, which is absolutely uh, uh, like absolutely an important aspect of customer experience we can leverage ai in many different ways right so one is obviously to you know test a lot of the hypothesis uh, you know that we're going and making design decisions on or designing you know journeys you know like as an example uh, like and those hypotheses can be informed by ai models you know which are being done uh, you know in a very very dynamic way and that can be like like very fundamental to actually creating those right design experiences and then as those experiences unfold as i talked about we worked with several clients to kind of figure out uh, like those right AI models, which will help us 
you know, predict the customer behavior in a better way. So for example, in one of the clients we are working with, we are like we're developing, you know, various propensity models, which really helps to understand the customer segments to kind of figure out, you know, what would appeal to that particular customer, uh, uh, um, the customer segment in terms of propensity models. And the propensity could be the propensity to buy through a particular channel, like the propensity for certain products and categories and subcategories and so on and so forth. And then those help you to, to predict the customer behavior, which then further like further reinforces the whole design thinking of like of designing those right experiences in knowing the customer preferences in mind, you know. Um, like personalization or real-time personalization is an excellent example of you know AI because like and like as I go back to the uh, like one of the previous questions that we were talking about, how do you make uh, you know interactions more conversation driven with customers as opposed to being rule based, right? And that's where AI plays a, like plays like plays such an important role because based on the ability to predict and the based on ability to predict for like for example for one of the clients we're working on the next best action, right? Which is called as NBA. Now NBA is nothing else, like 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 nothing but to like to like but to predict in terms of like in real time if the customer is interacting with a particular brand, how would they really look at you know what would be the next best action based on the behavior and the profile of the customer? And then serving that like that as part of their experience becomes you know becomes truly seamless. So uh, uh, if you look at AI, you know it kind of you know at all points of the journey, whether it uh, like whether it's linked to the upfront design as well as you know like the ongoing optimization and the ongoing you know, like delivery of customer life cycle value like is so fundamental to informing those experiences as well as all the solutions you know which are which are getting you know which are getting served like like which are really servicing those customers along the way through products right so you know one more example like as I said was about like designing the right campaigns right again you know, if you look at you know AI and how can AI really use uh, like like inform that is to be able to develop the right campaigns and the right um, basically like the right audiences for those campaigns you know which are like a lot more data led as opposed to you know rules or heuristics based you know based segmentation like so that the customers can find those offers and those campaigns a lot more like a lot more appealing and a lot more relevant to them and last but not the least I think uh, you know AI also plays uh, uh, like plays a very important role, uh, you know, when it comes to uh, like to kind of continuously improving, uh, you know, your customer experience, which is so critical because like in today's world, when the customer demands are changing so fast. So for example, one of the clients we're working with, we are helping them to improve their forecast accuracy, right? Um, because the customer demands are changing so much that based on those customer demands, you know, you're looking at uh, what do you really plan for in terms of products and services, you know? Like, how do you forecast? And this forecast, you know, process traditionally has been very, um, you know, quite uh, done in terms of, you know, a lot of different, uh, uh, like, at, like at fairly, uh, like I would say, like the forecast process is done at a very um, slow pace, you know, at a very, uh, like at very large intervals, right? But But once you start using, you know, once you have a strong AI framework, you know, which really like enables to run those models on a near continuous basis, you know, using data, they really help you to, you know, provide a much more um, shortened window of forecasting, you know, hence, uh, uh, hence A, improving their forecast accuracy, as well as to be more responsive to customers' needs and behaviors, right? So from, you know, from an ongoing basis in terms of how do we leverage AI, I think there's so many, like it's such a fundamental part of, you know, like of customer experience that it's something which, you know, which has to be ingrained in everything that you do, you know, like all the way from starting like to conceptualize a particular experience as well as to deliver it and then run it and then optimize it along the life cycle. Thanks for elaborating on that front, Vivek. And uh, how do you see the future of the company maybe five years down the lane? And uh, where do you uh, see the company making an impact on customer experiences with regard to investments even? Yeah, so Bilio has already in the last five years, you know, we have you know, we are amongst the market leaders in digital transformation, as is also, uh, you know, endorsed by a number of different analysts. And I just mentioned about Forrester in my my previous, you know, answer, rating us as um, as a very strong, you know, leader in like, like agile product engineering as well as digital experiences transformation. And really want to like, you know, we are very like well on the journey to become, you know, a leader in this space, like who's laser focused on 
um, on really accelerating digital transformation for you know for clients across industries, right? Um, so I think the, the next five years, you know, we definitely like I look I like to become you know five hundred million or half a billion company and like or above. Like even the next year or so, we're looking to add about four to five thousand people. And we obviously are growing uh, uh, like both by you know by organic growth as well as strategically adding set of capabilities to us through um, through different mergers and acquisitions. So a couple of them of uh, like of like in the recent times have been Cognitech, where we acquired a new a new organization you know like focused on customer experience analytics to to really bolster our uh, like our own capabilities in this space. And more recently, as you would have seen a couple of weeks back, you know we've also uh, you know, announced the acquisition of Standev, which is, uh, you know, which makes us amongst the the world's largest, you know, revenue cloud or uh, you need know, to revenue, you know, Salesforce practices. Uh, and this is this, this is particularly important because as we go along and uh, like and become, you know, like like a leader in this space, you know, it uh, it just helps us to kind of to make sure like that we are continuously growing in scale as well as in uh, like shape. Like in terms of you know having those holistic set of transformation capabilities, which can really enable end-to-end transformation for clients, and not just talk about point solutions, right? Uh, and that's where you know Brilio, you know, are well on the way of becoming a leader, and I think we are already a leader in many ways in our like in our own segment, and we would look forward to continuing that journey in a very strong and a fast manner. Wonderful. And uh, what would be your piece of advice to the emerging and budding leaders, you know, wanting to step into the uh, customer experience space? Yeah, so I think uh, I would say three, um, three big, uh, you know, thoughts which come to mind, you know, and, and that's, a, that's an excellent question, Shivani, because I think it's uh, like it's so important in the context of today and tomorrow to kind of, you know, look at, um, uh, like look at the space of customer experience transformation. So I think the first I would say is the, um, like as leaders, the ability to really uh, like be consultative and to really be, uh, you know, capable of, of consulting clients and leading them through their journeys, you know, through their, their transformation journey. And I say that for two reasons, right? One is um, the whole space is like is evolving very, very rapidly, right? So we've seen that in the COVID, you know, perhaps COVID has accelerated uh, the digital transformation charters for many organizations or has leapfrogged by maybe 3x or 5x. You know, there are different opinions out there, but it definitely has led to a lot of um, realization that, you know, we need to accelerate our, our, our transformation journeys, right, for all like organizations across industries. So first of all, leaders in this space have to really cope up with that change and to really be that change agent and consultative agents where they are hands-on involved in understanding the client's business you know how do we apply these technologies in the context of their business to get you know better business outcomes both for the organizations as well as their end customers right? i think that's the first one i would say is uh, you know being very consultative you know with a great degree of industry specialization and also you know deep knowledge about customers context to really be hands-on leaders you know who lead customers through these times of ambiguity and change the second one I would say is, you know, um, it's all about talent, right? And large, like large part about talent and people, right? So like, you know, strong leaders would obviously groom more, you know, stronger leaders and to really develop, you know, people in this space at a time where the industry is facing amongst, you know, I think it's a, uh, like it's a huge, you know, shortfall of quality talent when it comes to digital transformation skills, be it engineering, be it product, be it business, strategy or otherwise, uh, that there is a lot of, you know, need for innovative thinking, you know, in this space to make sure that 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 there is a continuous focus in not just hiring talent, but also grooming talent, you know, upskilling talent, growing talent. And towards that, if you look at some examples from Brilio or the Brilio Academies, you know, that we run, um, you know, in different areas, uh, like, like, you know, one, for example, for data and, and AI, ML and data engineering, these academies really help like to not just um, develop individuals on the domain, but to also help them understand the various nuances of different industries and their change paradigms. I right? think so that's the second and important piece is all about, you know, people leadership, you know, growing talent, especially in the, in the current, you know, um, demand supply gaps. And the third and the most important thing I would say is uh, in my mind is, 
strong execution right and you know like many times it just gets like gets a bit um, underwhelmed you know or it's or you're not spoken as much about because everybody talks big on transformation and goals and everything but at the end of the day you know when the rubber hits the road it's all about how well do you execute uh, you know to those like to those uh, change transformation charters and that's not an easy job because many of these you know engagements require a, like a fair amount of complexity um beat on the technology space in terms of you know you know um, mashups of different you know legacy platforms with with the new age digital technology you know need for modernizations and you know all sorts of complex ecosystems which are fast growing right both both internally within the organization as well as externally you know like the external partners as an example and i think one like one very fundamental aspect of execution is not just to develop solutions but also develop solutions and land the change within the organization that you're working for right so which is which involves a very uh, like high degree of change management you know user adoption trainings you know to make that uh, like to make the business impact that those solutions are intended to have right and all of that gets coupled into uh, you know very strong you know, execution capabilities because a lot of the uh, you know like like it's easy to kind of you know like sometimes i feel it's easier to kind of chart out those uh those like those newer road maps but it's very difficult to kind of stick to them given all the all the variables that come to play right so so leaders must be uh, uh like must focus a lot on very strong execution and that's where like example you know brilio is uh, like you know if you look at the feedback we get from many of our clients is about being extremely situationally fluent as well as to really you know go above and beyond to like, to make sure we deliver success for our clients and not just talk about it so i think that's the third part i would say is uh, you know super important from um, you know from my from my perspective in terms of you know how should leaders of tomorrow look at this space absolutely and i'm sure these three points are definitely going to help all our listeners in becoming better leaders especially in the customer experience space and uh, optimistically looking forward to see even more innovative solutions coming up from brelios end thank you so much vivek it was pleasure talking to you hope all our listeners have gained valuable insights from this session thank you so much so well, thanks everyone it was really great to be part of this and i really thank you for the opportunity and and really enjoyed being part of the session as well thank you thank you so much so listeners stay tuned for more such interesting podcast thank you see you all again very soon